Good morning. Welcome you to Fair Park Community Baptist Church. So glad to see all of you here today and we are praying that God blesses us as we are gathered together. Boy, I felt like it's just suddenly I got this burst of, 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 of loud. <laughs> anyway, uh, appreciate Jeff uh, Hans Paul, who's done such a good job helping uh, uh, with uh, all the sound and taking care of this. In fact, I forgot how to turn this on. I said, come up here and help me turn this on. So anyway, welcome online. We're glad to have you with us today, and we're praying that God blesses this service. It's uh, good to be back. Uh, please remember Sue Durchy in your prayers that God would just bless her in the uh, homegoing of Ken Durchy and uh, services held here this week for him. And uh, uh, a difficult thing, but aren't we glad to know that this isn't the end. This is just a transition to heaven, amen? So we can be thankful for that. So uh, we know where Brother Ken is today and he's rejoicing in heaven, I know, uh, as, uh, as he's having Sunday services up there. So. Uh, you be in prayer, though, for Sue, please, and, and for the uh, family, for his sister, and, and uh, all the relatives as well. Uh, we, uh, we're going to uh, listen this morning to a song uh, that was Brother Ken Durchie's favorite song, Nearer My God to Thee. So please, uh, this will be Zion's Hill. Sorry, Zion's Hill. I, uh, okay, we're going to listen to Zion's Hill. And uh, anyway, his one of his favorite songs, and so uh, you enjoy, and we're playing this as we remember him in a special way. There for me a glad tomorrow, where gates of pearl swing open wide.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church this morning. It's kind of dreary out there, so let's bring the sunshine in and let it float up to God. Let's all stand and we'll sing our morning song. How? Thank you, Ruth Ella. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Pray, pray His blessing on this service today, on one another, and uh, certainly uh, uh, again as we remember the Durchy family in a very special way. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for all that you have done for us, for life that you give us, for your love that is shed abroad. And Lord, we just pray today as we are gathered here in your house with the purpose and intent of worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, that you'll touch our hearts, that what we say and do will be for your honor and glory. Lord, we thank you for our pastor, Brother Ken Durchy, who served so faithfully here for so many years. Lord, we pray even as his life has transitioned to a new and better place, heaven, Lord, that, uh, that we just rejoice that uh, this is not the end, this is not the, the finality for us, that you have given us a home in heaven. So Lord, we rejoice together that Brother Ken Durchy has just simply gone home. Lord, we pray that you bless uh, Sue, be with her and strengthen her today, we pray. And Lord, uh, we would pray one for another that we are mindful that life is limited here on this earth and only these years that we are here do we have the opportunity to live and to serve and honor the name of Jesus Christ so Lord help us to be faithful to you help us to make each day count and we pray and we ask this in Jesus blessed and wonderful name amen uh, give everybody the hello or the Elbow shake or whatever you whatever you got, <laughs> or, the elbow or the elbow bump. There we go. That'll work. We're glad you're here. We uh, uh, are going to have uh, Brother Al Gruber, who is uh, agreed to read uh, the Word of God today, come and read for us 
uh, from James chapter 2, and he will bless our hearts and out. I've got to clean my glasses. I can't see. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring, in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you, and draw you before the judgment seats? And then we go to chapter 14, or verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and is destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Thank you, Brother Al, for reading from the Word of God for us today. And certainly, uh, as we are here with the opportunity to uh, share with you in just a little bit, uh, the message will be, Faith Without Works is Dead. I uh, want to uh, remind you of a number of prayer needs that we want to make mention of. Again, uh, be in prayer for uh, Sue Durchie, if you would, please. Uh, I, th I think it was so special. Uh, Brother Ken served as a chaplain of the uh, fire department. Uh, in fact, Al, who just read scripture for us, was chief for uh, a number of years. Anyway, uh, the fire department came and uh, honored Brother Ken by their presence, by uh, giving a, a last watch uh, by the casket, and and then uh, escorted him out to the uh, uh, to the uh, cemetery. So, uh, our thanks to the Marion City Fire Department for the good job that they did, and their uh, their love of Brother Ken very much appreciated. Uh, and. Uh, my thanks to Reverend Ann Kiger, Reverend Mike Reynolds, who uh, officiated at the service, uh, were here. I was out of town, and so I, I so much appreciate their uh, love and dedication and their friendship to Brother Ken as they gave it. And also my thanks to Brother Steve Bloomfield, who preached last Sunday. I understand did an outstanding job. So anyway, I appreciate uh, Brother Steve so very much and uh, glad to have him in the pulpit uh, filling last Sunday. Uh, I received word just this morning, uh, Sharon Ulrich, a longtime member here, she's been in the Kingston nursing home for a long time, uh, is critically ill, um, and um, hospice is involved, and, and perhaps even this week uh, the Lord will call her home. So we ask you to be very, very much in prayer for the Ulrich family, uh, that God would bless uh, uh daughter and, and just the family that uh, it would be a time of uh, uh, help for them as they uh, go through this uh, difficult time um, and uh, it's been a while since I'd seen Sharon I visited her regularly in the nursing home and of course uh, nursing home visits haven't been permitted so uh, anyway I, I haven't seen her in quite a while so you pray for uh, uh, Sharon very very close to uh, the end of life and that God would just bless in a special way. Then also, uh, remember David Mogans uh, having several health issues, very much in need of prayer. And also, uh, uh, appreciate your prayers for my, uh, for Debbie and my daughter. She 
Debbie said last time I said this, I said my daughter, and she said she's my daughter too. I said, that's true. <laughs> so anyway, uh, remember Angie in your prayers. Uh, she'll uh, is setting up appointments at uh, Cleveland Clinic and probably will be having open heart surgery uh, in another month or so. So we ask you to remember her uh, very much in your prayers. And then uh, Doug Chevalier, who is... Uh, who is always here, uh, very faithful, is homesick today, and so needs your prayers. Remember him, if you would. Remember Cheryl uh, and, her, and her health concerns. Just pray in a very uh, special way uh, for them. And, if, and we have a long list on our prayer list, and we're not going to read all the names, but just remember those in prayer. Are there any other special needs? Yes, uh, Sharon. Okay, remember Frank Kors in your prayers, please. Anyone else? Yes, Lonnie. Okay, okay. remember Man yes, Mandy Trail, yes. She's on our prayer list and, and so uh, cancer and did have surgery, but uh, anyway, went better than expected. So we're thankful to, to hear that. Anyone else? All right, okay. Well, we, we appreciate uh, um, all of your prayers and we appreciate you online as you pray for these needs and uh, concerns. And we're going to sing our prayer course this morning. I am praying for you. And as we sing it through, we'll invite you to just slip your hand up if you have a special unspoken request, and certainly at home you can do that as well. For you I am praying, for you. going to repeat that one more time for you I am praying for you I am praying for you I am praying I'm praying for you I want to remember Gwen in our prayers too having some health uh, concerns so play, remember Gwen too Heavenly Father we come before you at this time of prayer and we're thankful that we have the opportunity to pray without ceasing and Lord we just pray that our lives will be faithful in that matter of prayer that we'll lift up the names of these that uh, certainly need your love and care and concern Again, we lift up Sue Durchy in a special way and pray for her. We, we think of Frank Kors and certainly pray for him as well as Doug Chevalier. And uh, we certainly remember today Sharon Ulrich, Lord. Just uh, watch over her and might your sweet angels just attend to her at this time of life. Lord, we're asking today that you bless uh, each one of us as we are here, hands lifted for prayer needs Perhaps some of us know nothing of, but Lord, we send these prayers that we know they ascend to the throne of heaven at this very moment. So Lord, we pray today for those who are listening with us uh, uh, through Facebook and YouTube that you might bless those special prayer needs that just are, are important, and Lord, we, we take them and give them to you. Lord, we pray so much for the people that are uh, in prospect and, and uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, as well um, uh, just in, in the areas around us where we know flooding is a real problem and so we ask that you bless those who, who are dealing with uh, high water issues at this time. So Lord we know that uh, whatever the season is there is need for prayer and so Lord we come to you thankful that the throne is open and that you listen and attend to our needs. And God, you are so good to us. So thank you for each one present today. And Lord, thank you for your blessings on our lives. And might we just today give you the honor 
and the glory. For we pray it in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. Remind you of just a, a few things. Uh, of course, hard to believe tomorrow is March, and uh, but that's an okay thing. I think most of us agree marching into March is a good thing. So anyway, uh, we, we are hoping and praying for warmer weather. The 8th, remind uh, our church council will be meeting. That's a week from Monday night. And then uh, daylight savings time on the uh, 14th of uh, uh of uh, March so uh, that comes a little early this year and that's due to uh, Easter and everything a little early this year so anyway uh, as we uh, celebrate all those special days we'll talk a little more about that next week but uh, be in prayer about uh, about those special days uh, then of course uh, uh, the uh, 27th has been fellowship uh, prayer breakfast and uh, remind you about that and uh, how did that go yesterday 13. Okay, good group. Good group out for men's prayer breakfast. I, uh, I told them if they were willing to wait till 11 o'clock at night, I could come. <laughs> uh, and actually, I would have been late. I wouldn't have made it. I, I didn't get home till 10 minutes till 12 last night. Uh, anyway, but uh, Debbie and I and Keith, our son, and Jackson, our grandson, uh, uh, went down to Florida for a few days and warmed up a little bit and uh, had, a, had a good safe trip, a nice time, and, uh, but it's good to be back here. By the way, I wanted to, to uh, remind uh, everybody listening online, we still have some empty parking spaces in the parking lot that uh, you're welcome to come and fill up and uh, there, there is room, there is room, I promise you. So anyway, I, I know we're getting to where a lot of people are getting vaccinations and prayerfully uh, we'll be seeing more in the Lord's house as, uh, as uh, everybody feels a little more comfortable about that. But we're glad for those who are here today, for those who are listening, we thank you for listening to us uh, and uh, we appreciate uh, the, the good response that we have uh, through Facebook and, and YouTube and on our church web page. Uh, I think that's all the announcements, I believe. So uh, remind you of the uh, offering. Uh, and again, thank you for those who are mailing in offerings. We appreciate that so very much. And, uh, and also those who are uh, here and putting it in the offering plate uh, beginning or end of service. And uh, again, your, uh, your giving uh, keeps the doors open and allows us to continue the ministry here at Fair Park Community uh, Baptist Church. We're going to ask Ruth Ella to come at this time, and uh, she is going to lead us in Tell It to Jesus. That's uh, page 510. Please stand. Al.
I'm so glad he's there to hear and listen to us. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Ruth Ellen. Thank you for your good singing today. I'm sure you were, some of you at least, were singing at home as you knew the songs. And uh, uh, good, to, uh, good to sing songs of praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. I, uh, while we were getting ready to head to the airport in uh, Orlando, uh, Florida, yesterday we stopped to get a bite to eat. I don't know if I'm allowed to say the restaurant or is that considered an ad? <laughs> Anyway, it's Sonny's Barbecue. That's good barbecue. Anyway, we stopped, and um, uh, Debbie uh, looked and said, look, that guy's got a, an Ohio uh, Buckeye mask on. So she waved at him, and he came over. And uh, anyway, we, uh, we said hello, and he said, where are you guys from? He, and we said, Marion. And he said, well, I'm from Marion. And... Uh, and so I uh, talked to him a little bit and told him that I pastored here at the Fair Park Community Baptist Church. He said, well, then you knew Joyce Ramsey, which was his uh, grandmother. Uh, and I cannot believe we, uh, so you never know who you run into wherever you are. As we were uh, flying home, uh, seats, uh, anyway, Debbie was able to sit with uh, Keith and, and our grandson Jackson, but anyway, I had sat on the other side, and I had a middle seat, so I had two ladies sitting on either side of me, but I found out both of them Christian ladies, one from that state up north, uh, you know where that's at, anyway, but, but a fine Christian lady, and the lady sitting next to me was a Christian author, so, uh, so anyway, I had some interesting conversation coming back, and so uh, she was a uh, lady who had uh, grew up as a Hindu, and has been saved about eight years and has written three books. And anyway, I, I just, it was uh, fascinating. And re it reminds us that there are Christians out there. And we just have to remember to, to, to watch for them and look for them. Well, today I want to preach to you out of faith without works is dead. And really the whole chapter 2 uh, of James, if you go home and reread that passage, I think you'll find some very interesting thoughts in there about faith and the matter of works. Uh, chapter 2 is, is a symposium, if you please, of faith. And in this passage that we're dealing with today, we find the necessity of works, and it shows forth that faith without works is dead. It's not that works save us, but it's that work te works testify, or deeds, if you please, testify that we have been born again. Someone said faith is like an anchor. It's something we need to have and use to avoid spiritual cataclysm. There's so many things that would ruin our lives or, or bring us down as Christians and hold us back in our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, as I heard this one lady who had uh, been in the Hindu uh, religion and then found Christ eight years ago. Uh, she said, I still am growing and trying to learn and trying, and I said, life is, is a learning experience. And, and when you think about it, faith is the glass through which the fire of God uh, brings out of heaven. It was faith that drew the fire down on Carmel and burned up Elijah's offering. And we have the same God today. The same faith. And some people, I think, sometimes think that faith is getting old and that the Bible is wearing out, but the Lord will revive His work. God continues to work in our lives. And we'll be able to see the world on fire one day. There's a promise of a revival that is to come. But we as believers have to be strong and simple in our faith. We just have to simply believe. And so faith is that opportunity to show that faith, or, or as, our, as we read in our scripture, that faith without works is dead. And so the question might be asked, what is faith? Well, first of all, let me share with you that faith is a gift of God. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, and verses 8 and 9, and actually I'm going to read verse 10 too. In this passage, and if there's one passage of Scripture, I encourage you 
and there are many, but this is one you ought to mark, earmark on your Bible. Get you a little yellow pen marker or some marker to, to, to uh, indicate these mean something special to you. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And then verse 9 reminds us, it is not of works. It's not things that we do, lest anyone should boast. And then it goes on to say in verse 10, and here's where the working and work comes involved, it becomes involved. For we are his workmanship. Uh, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Good works. God wants us to fill our lives up with good works. So faith is a gift of God. Have you ever thought about the very element of believing is not something you produce. It's something God produces inside of you. And as you begin to believe and your, and your faith grows, you begin to understand what God is and what He does and how he, he touches your life. You see, we have faith that is a belief in something we cannot see. We can't see God, can we? Uh, we know He's here. We know He's in the room with us today because the Scripture promises that where two or three are gathered together, there He will be also. So faith is that belief in who He is. And faith also brings justification. In Romans 3 and verse 28, and, and another very important verse of Scripture, uh, Romans 3, which is a, a, a great passage of Scripture to teach someone about salvation. Verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Verse 28 says, Therefore we can conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. You see, people had got to thinking that it was what they were doing that would get them to heaven. And you know what? Strangely enough, that's still believed today. A lot of people think, if I am a good person, if I do good works, if I do good things, I'll gain heaven. But the Word of God says it's not by our works. It's by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's by faith that we are justified. And justified means made right in God's sight. We are, we are just like God in the sense that He sees us through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so faith is that gift that God gives us in which we believe in Him. And then the second matter we want to talk about is works. What is works? Well, works will not save. That's what I just read for you in Romans 3.27. It doesn't save us. It doesn't make you more heaven uh, worthy. Works doesn't save. And there are different types of works, might we understand. There is faith-produced works, and then there are carnal works. And carnal works is those things of the flesh where we, we think we're doing something good. Uh, it's like when Jesus talked about the widow who came with a mite, which was a penny, or less than a penny, a half penny. And that was all that she had, but she came and put it in the treasury at the temple. And then another man came with a whole pack of, of, of change or of gold, and he drops it in the offering plate and looks around to see who sees that he gave. Faith is that giving of what we have and expressing that God loves us and that we love Him and desire to do for Him. So works is that evidence of a God-given faith. Uh, the Word of God says that fruit of the Spirit shows that we are saved. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, and peaceness. And it says against intemperance, and it says against such there is no law. It rises above the law. Works doesn't save us, but we understand it's evidence that God has saved us. Do you, do you get the difference? You see, we don't just get saved and sit on a pew. We don't just get saved and stop being a, a good person. In fact, we ought to be encouraged to do good things because God has saved us. That's called grace, and that grace changes us to where we want to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me begin by saying today, faith in God does not lead us to be a respecter of persons. It doesn't prove that 
that our achievements, our goodness, is what makes us better people. In James chapter 2, it said in verse 5, Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? We know, first of all, salvation is of the Lord. We, I hope all of us understand that. We're not saved by our good works. We're not saved by, by being a good person. We're not saved by giving to church or, or, or walking. <laughs> used to hear this uh, years ago, walking an old lady across the street. Well, now that I'm old, I can't say that anymore. But anyway, but that's not what gets us to heaven. But we, by example, do those things because we are saved. And faith in God doesn't, though, lead us to respect who someone is. If someone has a million dollars and someone over here has ten dollars, that's God's not a respecter of that. He doesn't care about the money. He cares about the soul. And the truth of the matter, God has saved us and not we ourselves, Ephesians 2 tells us. And so the scripture teaches us salvation is of the Lord. And faith is an individual experience. When God begins working in your heart, the Holy Spirit begins to move and you begin to understand who Jesus Christ is. Faith is that inward experience. And we can testify of that faith, that we have faith in who God is, faith that God saved us from our sins, and that shows that we are genuinely saved. Faith is an individual experience. It's not a collective. It's not a group deal. You get to heaven by your personal trusting in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And when this new faith is present, we have divine revelation. God gives us the ability to understand the Word of God. We begin to say, oh, I get it now. I figure it out a little bit now. Now, let me say, first of all, in, in that understanding, God is no respecter of persons. Don't think that God thinks less of you if you're poor. Or that God thinks more of you because you're rich. Or maybe some people even have that reversed to where they think, I'm so wealthy, God wouldn't want to talk to me because I, I, I've, I've achieved this in my life. Well, actually, God allowed you to achieve that in your life if you have that. And, and as we understand God is no respecter of persons, as Christians, we should maintain that same perspective. And by that I mean when someone walks through the door here at Fair Park Community Baptist Church, it doesn't matter to us who they are. It doesn't matter the color of their skin. It doesn't matter what they have done in their life in the past because when a person trusts in Christ as Savior, his sin is forgiven. It's all forgiven. And we understand that we trust that people come to Jesus Christ and we enter in on that same plane, that same level, because faith is that moving from being a lost person to being a saved person. And by the way, secondly this morning, I want to tell you that works is an outward sign of that inward working of grace. It tells us God's working. When you do things in your life, when you put your offering in the offering plate, when, when you care about someone, you pray about uh, things in your life, that's the evidence that God has saved you from your sins. You see, the world judges a saint by his works. Have you ever thought of that? When you think about the person who is, is lost in sin and is not saved, they look on your life. They look to see how you live. This uh, same lady who's a Christian author now said that um, she talked to her uncle who is still a Hindu. And his understanding of Christianity was, you people think you're better than me. And she said, no, uncle, I, I don't think that at all. And the works of a, of, of a saint just simply exemplifies Christ. We try to show who Christ is. That's what our work should be doing. The way we live, the way we talk, the way we, we even dress. 
It ought to evidence that we know Christ and that He has changed our life. And if no works are present in your life, the world can say, well, then there's no difference between you and me. You do the same things I do. We ought to be different. Our lives ought to be set apart. The Bible talks about sanctification. And sanctification is that growth in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ, that dedication to Him, that, that following Him a little bit closer. And Christians know each other, by the way, we know each other by our works. We know one another as we walk through the door. I think one of the hardest things that we've experienced in COVID, and I, I'm sure you agree with me, is we enjoy, have enjoyed so much here at Fair Park, uh, going up and, and, and when we have our, our welcome and, and our fellowship and we go around and shake hands and maybe even hug a little bit and, and it just indicated how much we care. And COVID's kind of put a, what do I want to say, a kanosh, that's not the right word, but anyway, uh, uh, kind of blocked that a little bit, hasn't it? Well, I want you to know we still love one another, Amen. And, and that's evidenced by just the way we talk to one another and care about one another. And so when we understand that our works represent who we are, that makes all the difference in the world. And if works are not present, the world says, hey, I don't know what's so special about you. There's nothing in your life that I see that represents Christ. They may not say it that way, but that's really what they mean. Now, if we know one another by our works, we understand some things. And I hope we have this straight in our hearts today. We're not respecter of persons. Uh, it talks about the man with the gold ring. That was a high symbol in, in the days of uh, the Apostle Paul and, and uh, James as they wrote this. It was a, it was a big deal to wear a gold ring because it indicated you had money. And it, it also talked about their, their raiment or their clothes. And it, it, it says we don't know one another by our vile raiment. And it's indicating our clothes is not the, uh, the solution. Uh, it's not the answer. And sometimes people put so much emphasis on what we have that we forget we're not here for those things. We're here to serve Christ. And Jesus has saved whom he, he, he will and all those who are saved are our brothers and sisters in Christ. Maybe someone's come from a very difficult and derelict place in the world. Maybe they've come uh, where we are thankful we've not had to trod doesn't matter if they know Jesus Christ as Savior. They're our brothers and sisters in Christ. And whether they come uh, from Millionaire Alley and they walk through the door and acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they're our brother and sister in Christ. And what we do then with our lives indicates who we are. You see, it's, it's evidence, if you please. Just like you would go to a, to a trial and you have... The, the evidence presented, it determines, are we serving God or are we not serving God? And that is important. That's what works is considered for the believer. It shows our love for the Lord Jesus Christ. It indicates our sweet spirit one for another. I don't think we've saying it a while, but I love, there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. That's a good song to know that the Holy Spirit moves and dwells within us. And works indicates our sweet spirit one for another. When we care for one another, when we send a card in the mail and say, I know you were sick just thinking of you and wanted you to know that, that makes a, a big difference. There are so many things that we can do that indicate we care and we care because we are Christian. And that brings me to the final thought I wanted to share with you today. A true Christian, a saint of God, will have faith with works. You trust in God and then you prove it by what you do. I think sometimes Christians want to shy away from the word works. I think we as Baptists are 
perhaps guilty of that sometimes. Afraid that, that some will think we're working our way to heaven. Not so at all. There are some who have muddled the word and we have the wrong impression about works and works won't get you to heaven. Being a good person this week won't make you any more saved than you were last week. It's just an evidence that you know Jesus Christ as Savior. Works ought to permeate our life as believers in Christ. And if we put then this in it, faith with works, that makes all the difference. To say a man is a carpenter and to prove it are two different things. Years ago, I built a baptistry in uh, Louisiana. And, and our church uh, that I pastored, our first church that God placed Debbie and I at, uh, was a very, very poor area. And uh, our building was an old storefront building that had been converted to a church. And uh, the whole time we were there, we worked on that old building trying to make it better. Anyway, decided we were going to add a baptistry in the church. And, uh, and so to do that, I, I knew we had to either buy a liner or do something that would uh, hold water. So anyway, uh, I had a guy say, well, I know how to fiberglass, told me he did. <laughs> and so we, we bought marine grade plywood, put in the, the baptistry, and then bought the fiberglass. And I'll tell you what, you get in a little place like our baptistry is and you start fiberglassing the walls, I can't say I've ever been drunk, but I'm pretty sure I was while I was fiberglassing. That's strong stuff, that really smells. But any, anyway, we, we put a coat on and I waited for a couple days and run the water. Started, I thought, you know, let's, I was excited. So I started filling the baptistry and I thought, what do I hear? And well, our church was up off the ground about two and a half feet because it floods so much in Louisiana. Anyway, anyway I, I went and looked under the building. Water was just pouring out from underneath. And so we went and bought some more fiberglass, a little more material, and put it on top. Did the same thing. So I went back to the place where we were, uh, uh, had bought the, I had bought the fiberglass uh, from, and uh, I, it was a, a boat, uh, a place that built boats. I said, okay, I said, I need to know what you're supposed to do to make this fiberglass stick and for it not to leak. And so anyway, they went through, and he had, a guy had a little thing that looked like a paintbrush with little metal spikes on it, and he was running that over the cloth as they put the sprayed the uh, fiberglass on and anyway uh, too long of a story I know but anyway I said what's he doing he said well he's breaking the bubbles so that the uh, all the holes will fill with the fiberglass went back and did that a third time now I've got a bumpy looking <laughs> baptistry because we had to patch it in several places but it didn't leak anymore and all the difference was you had to know what you were doing okay that, that's that, that's the, what I'm trying to share with you. And, and sometimes when we think about it, a lot of people say, I know how to be a Christian, I know how to live, but then they don't really seem to know that. And so here's two things I want to share with you, and hopefully this will help us today. Faithfulness will help us move out into active duty. It makes us faithful. Faith with works and so what is active duty well that's serving God and the way we can serve God is in, in serve God is in multiple ways we can do that by storehouse tithing that's giving to the Lord a, a tenth of our of our income just to say Lord we trust you with the rest we know you're going to bless that service to God includes prayer uh, the time we spend with Him and the time we spend praying with others to pray to God, that's a good thing to indicate that we mean business with God. And service to God includes brotherly love. Uh, one of the great things that I, I think Fair Park has been so good at is loving, is sharing, is caring. And that's what God wants us to do. That's a work, that's an evidence that you've been saved. Service to God includes witnessing, 
testifying that Jesus saves us from our sins. Service to God includes regular attendance in the house of God. I'm so glad we're moving through, and I hope and pray we really are moving through COVID, and we can see God's people back together. Let me tell you something. I, uh, lady that from that state up north that was sitting next to me on, on the plane, she said, I can't believe how many people aren't in church, and it's because of COVID. We know and we understand that. But it's, it's also our trusting God a little bit in all this. And, and, and praying that God will lead us. Doing the, the socially acceptable things, but knowing that God is leading us. That's a good thing. And service to God also includes daily feeding in His Word. Getting into the Bible and reading it and learning for yourself. And that brings me to the second thought, and then I'll be done. Works is an involved part of our faith. It, it, it just ought to be connected. Faith without works is dead. It, just, it means your faith isn't going anywhere. It's not being used. It's not being motivated. It's, it's like someone knitting. Uh, I, I can't say I've ever knitted. Never had an urge to. But I know some people knit and do a good job at knitting. But you have to know what you're doing. There's all kinds of stitches involved in, niching, right? in knitting, right? And as we work, we grow. I wonder, how, how are we concerned about our soul's welfare? Are we knitting the Word of God into our lives, prayer into our lives, to just get a little closer to Him? A work is reading His Word. If we open the Bible and and, be, and, and consider that our spiritual duty to read the Word of God. That's important. A work is attending God's house. And a work is watchfulness over our conduct in the little matters of everyday life. God wants us to be faithful. There was a large metropolitan hospital and a surgeon who insisted on having a moment alone every time before he would go into the operating room. And because of his great skill, many younger doctors wondered if, they, if there might be a relation between his success and his unfortunately unusual habit. And when one of the interns put the question to the surgeon, he answered, yes. The surgeon said there is a relationship, a very close one. Before each operation, I asked the great physician to be with me, to guide my hands in their work. And there have been times when I didn't know what to do next and there came power to go on and do what needed to be done for that person. Power that he said, I know, came from God. He said, I would not think of performing an operation without asking God's help. That's the intertwining of faith and works. And the surgeon's story spread throughout the country. One day a father brought his little daughter to the hospital insisting, I want that doctor who works with God, I want him to operate on my little daughter. That's how God wants us to live and serve. How he wants us to live where we are so connected to God. The things that we do are what he wants us to do. I hope we know that our faith is exemplified through our living, our works, our deeds if you please. And we show then the Lord Jesus Christ and who He is and what He does for us. We're going to sing just one verse of page uh, 483, Have You Any Room for Jesus? We'll sing just the first verse. We'd like you all to stand. And Ruth Ella, would you come and lead us please?
today we do have room for Jesus. We include him in all that we do and all that we say. And our lives just exemplify Jesus Christ. Today, faith without works is dead. But faith with works evidences to those who do not know Jesus Christ as Savior that there's something unique and different about your life. Let's live for Jesus. Count for Him until He calls us home to be with Him forevermore. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And again, appreciate all of you being here today. And uh, Brother Bob Johnston, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer, sir?